Join Midway Baptist Church for Sunday School at 945, worship service at 11, and Wednesday night service at 7. Pastor Steve and Pastor Josh invite you to join us as we seek to glorify God by building the church of tomorrow today through fervent prayer, evangelism, discipleship, and family ministry. church I want to spend a few minutes with you in Bible study just looking at the subject of when God opens our eyes I want us to take a journey tonight in the book of Luke in chapter 24 a journey to the road to Emmaus in the scripture in chapter 24 starting in verse 13 we read through verse 35 and behold two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they commended, uh, communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou not known the things which have come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death with, and then have him crucified. But he trusted that he had been which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made astonished, which the, were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of these which were with them to, went to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said, and they say not, or saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart, believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them the scriptures which things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went, and he made of the, uh, as though he would continue to gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as they sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they, drew, they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while we talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told him the things which were done in the way, and how that he had known of them in breaking of bread. Father, 
we ask that as we have broke the bread of life today, that Lord, dear Holy Spirit, would give us understanding of what the Scripture on the journey to the road to Emmaus has to teach us tonight. I pray that, Father, that you would take the words that you have given to me and, and, and that you would use them to speak to your children. Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see and the word to understand tonight, we pray. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would give us understanding from your perspective, not from ours. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have celebrated Jesus' resurrection this last Sunday. And all too often we move on before we have the full effect of the resurrection. I want to spend some time tonight with you on the road to Emmaus. Luke is the only one of the four gospel writers which include this wonderful story. It's a story that reveals to us not only something about us and who we are, but how Jesus opens our eyes to see Him and who He is and about how we can come to know Him and then He puts within a desire in our heart to share Him. The journey to Emmaus is both a literal and spiritual journey. On one hand, the reaccounts the story of the two disciples who, after the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord, walk seven miles from Jerusalem to their village in, of Emmaus. On the other hand, is outlined for us the journey that we all take from not recognizing who Jesus is to understanding what the Scripture says about Him to fully recognizing Him for who He is as our Savior. And then finally, giving witness to those around us of what we ourselves have experienced as we have come to understand who He is as our Savior. So let's look at this, some things tonight that we learn from the road to Emmaus. First of all, Jesus seeks us even when we are not looking for Him. The story tells us that those men knew all that had gone on with Jesus. They knew about His death, His burial, and even His supposed resurrection. However, instead of going out looking for Him, they decided to simply just give up and go home. Along the way, Jesus comes alongside the two men and asks them, What's going on? Why are you so sad? Although the disciples knew who Jesus was, they did not recognize Him in their presence. They knew a lot about Him. They had heard, and no doubt on many occasions, they had even heard Jesus perhaps testify about Himself and what He had come to do and what He was going to do. Yet, because they were not seeking Him... They were unable to recognize Him. This goes to show us that Jesus is always looking for us, even when we are not looking for Him. Here are several reasons why they and us today don't recognize Jesus. Consider, first of all, God did not want them to recognize Him. Now you say, Pastor, that's kind of strange. Why would God not want them to recognize Him? Well, look at the Scripture. The original language conveys the sense that they were kept from recognizing Him because God has a purpose in blinding their eyes from the reality of the moment. Jesus is not being cruel here. He's not keeping people from coming to Him, but He wants people to fully understand Him. So he does it gradually. His gradual revelation of himself allows them to learn certain lessons about trusting God's promises. Remember, they had heard Jesus proclaim of his coming death, his burial and his resurrection. He had heard of the testimonies, but they weren't yet fully believing the promises of God. Disciples have been told all about these events many times but they had not yet come to believe. This is the same with us, in that God has His own way of revealing Himself to us. 
For many of us, it was a gradual, step-by-step experience that God unveiled Himself before us, giving us the full revelation of Himself until we came to know Him as Savior. The second thing that we learn is that events had not happened as expected. Boy, are we not living in those times today. But let's think about them. They had a preconceived idea of who Jesus was, what He had come to do, and how that He should do it. But when things didn't turn out the way that they had thought they should, they dismissed the whole thing as mere failure or misplaced hope and trust. Oftentimes we do the same thing, church. We see God moving in one direction, thinking that He's moving this way, and God takes a a, a sharp turn, and then we think, oh well, it's all for naught. But it's not. God has a purpose. While God always has a plan, we are not always privy to His plan. When things don't turn out like we expect, instead of giving up and admitting defeat, Perhaps we should be wise enough to see things God's way and not our way. Maybe God is up to something that we simply can't understand right now, but when He fully unveils it, we will recognize it for what it is. The third thing that we see is they had little faith to believe in the great big God. I'm afraid that many of us today are the same way. I'm afraid that many of us think we have faith enough to believe, but when it comes right down to it, our faith is oh but small. But don't lose hope. I'm always reminded myself uh, of the man who came to Jesus and asked for um, Jesus to heal his son. Jesus simply asked him, do you have faith? And I can certainly appreciate this man's honesty. I have faith or I believe, but Lord, help me in my unbelief. I have faith enough to begin to believe, but God, if you will bolster that, if you'll reveal to me who you are, I will have a much larger faith. They had heard the reports of the women who went to the tomb. They had heard the reports of the men who had came back from the tomb to see the grave was empty, but yet they choose not to believe. The supernatural working of God to raise Jesus from the dead was just outside of their uh, understanding. They had never seriously considered the power that Jesus had. We need to be careful not to make the same mistake. To discount what God has done simply because we cannot explain it or fully understand it. While God often uses natural things to accomplish His will, He also does things that we can neither explain nor understand. The two disciples on the road to Demaeus knew something had happened But it was beyond their level of faith to see the fullness of what God had unveiled before them. The second thing that we see as we walk this journey with these two men is that Jesus opens our eyes when He knows we're ready to see. My friends, I want you to understand that that God reveals Himself to us gradually. And then opens our eyes when it is time for you and I to see who He really is. Consider, if you would, uh, what the text says. In verse 27, it says, Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted for them the things concerning Himself in Scripture. But what does that mean? Well, it simply means that Jesus went back through the Old Testament and painted a picture for them of who Jesus was and why He came and how that the Old Testament Scripture pointed exactly to Jesus, the one in whom they'd seen crucified and buried and now heard had risen from the grave. Let's take that journey together, would you? Just follow along with me if you would. Perhaps Jesus began 
with Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, where the scripture says, where, where God cursed the serpent, saying, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. From there, maybe Jesus went on to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 15, which says, The Lord thy God will rise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, and unto ye shall hearken. And from there, perhaps, maybe he moved on to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, where God says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give a sign, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. From there, Jesus could have taken him to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Perhaps Jesus showed them what Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 7 said. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb before the slaughter and a sheep before its shearers not, uh, or is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Then maybe he quoted Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his own son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. I don't know for sure what verses Jesus used, but I know these tell us the story. We know that Jesus walked with them through the entire revelation of the Old Testament to give witness to who He was and why He had come and why it was necessary for Him to suffer and to die. My friends, you and I can look back at Scripture and we can see it clearly. They were looking at the situation and trying to wonder what, how to tie it all together. If we have the entirety of the Scripture and yet we struggle to see who Jesus is, don't be careful, don't criticize them for not seeing. Remember, God reveals it at, at a gradual pace. But when He opens our eyes, we will fully understand. Might I remind you that Scripture gives testimony of who Jesus is. He uses it today to open our eyes to those who do not know the truth. My friends, that's why it's so important for us to spend time in the Scripture. Many people will tell you who Jesus is. They will tell you that He is one of the many ways to get to heaven. They will tell you that He was a good man, a great prophet, a good teacher. They might even say that He was a rebel who defied the Roman authorities. But outside of the knowledge of Scripture, my friends, you and I will never get a proper understanding of who Jesus really is. God, however through the Old Testament, presents Himself to these two disciples. And He helps them to recognize Jesus as to who He is. As they convey this deep truth of understanding of what the Messiah is really to look like, they still are struggling to grasp it all. Even if we were to see, even if we were to see all that we need to see, the truth is we might not still believe. We must trust in the testimony of the Scripture to fully grasp who Jesus is. 
The third thing that I want you to see is when Jesus reveals himself at the right time. Now, they've walked this journey seven miles. I, I, I don't know when's the last time you've walked seven miles, but it takes a minute or two, and uh, you can have a pretty good conversation in that span of time. And Jesus is walking along, and you might wonder, well, why did he reveal himself during the journey? Seven miles. But the scripture tells us that uh, when they got to Emmaus, they, uh, they begin to get off the road to go to their house, and Jesus acts as if he's going further down the main road, and they get him to stay, and he goes to their house. And it's there that Jesus fully reveals himself. It was only as they have fellowship with Jesus that he disclosed himself as to who he was. You see, Jesus reveals himself to those whose eyes he has opened through the truth of his word. Now listen, sometimes we can read the Word, we can hear the Word, but sometimes it takes a while for the Spirit of God to interpret or to cause us to understand, to clearly see, and then all of a sudden you get that aha moment, and you say, now I see. It is not without significance (laughs) that the Scripture here in Luke's Gospel tells us Uh, about a particular time when God opens the eyes of the disciples. As a matter of fact, it's around the supper table that the disciples' eyes are opened, and they see Jesus for who He really is. After the resurrection, many of the appearances of Jesus are associated with table fellowship. Peter on the seashore with the disciples eating fish, with Jesus. This is true here in Luke chapter 24. It's true in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. And again in John chapter 21 and verses 9 through 15. It's during that intimate time of fellowship with Jesus that He reveals Himself to us. His working in our life become clearer when we are in fellowship with Him. And His provisions and protection come into focus when we are are, are spending time with Him. And then fourthly, we learn from this journey on the road to Emmaus, Jesus moves us to share our experience with others. Easter celebration of the resurrection of Jesus is something that should cause us to be excited to share with others. When your eyes have been fully opened to who He is and what He has done for you, you will want others to have their eyes open too. Can you imagine the excitement they must have felt after they realized who Jesus was. And then the scripture says immediately he disappears. They didn't even have a time to, to, to celebrate with him that they had understood. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he yet spoke to us along the way? While he was explaining the scripture and revealing to us, were we not stirred within our spirit? My friends, remember, sometimes we're stirred in our spirit, but yet it takes a few moments for our eyes to be opened to what Jesus is teaching us. Their encounter with Jesus had had been emotional for sure. It had stirred them on the inside. It had moved their very hearts. And once moved, they could not help but share what God had done for them. Now, the scripture tells us that they had walked seven miles into the evening, 
And they said to Jesus, come in, it is late, it is almost dark, come spend the night with us. So here we are at the end of the evening, even though the hour was very dark, it was late, the road back to Jerusalem was dangerous at night at best. They gave uh, their selves over to God and His work and, and rushed back to Jerusalem to give witness that Jesus had risen from the grave and that He had walked with them and talked with them and explained the Scripture to them and broke bread with them. All who had experienced the risen Savior should be moved with similar emotion. All of us who have come to know Him should react in a similar way. We should not be able to contain the joy that overflows within our hearts. Jesus told Thomas in John chapter 20 and verse 29, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have believed but yet not seen. My friends, the road to Emmaus is a great learning experience. It is an opportunity for us to take a journey that is both emotional and spiritual. The road to Emmaus teaches us that the resurrected Jesus is looking for the right time to open our eyes so that we might understand His Word and that we might come to know Him and want Him to share our experience with others. This week, as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the rearview mirror of life, may it be a time like the disciples when we might be trying to get back to everyday life that we realize that God says, come take a journey with me on the road to Emmaus. As you are going through life, Will you walk with me for a spell? Will you talk with me for a spell? Will you hear me for a spell? And then spend some time in the Word. Spend some time in fellowship with Jesus. And ask Him to reveal Himself in a fuller way. So that we will be excited to share our faith with others. In just a minute, we're going to play a video about some of our missionaries and a missionary in Denver who is, is looking for opportunities for um, God to open up the eyes of those that He's working with to see Him and to know Him. So let's watch and then let's pray for our missionaries this week. May God bless you until we meet again. So Mongolians love basketball. Many people think Mongolians like horse riding, so this is our culture. But here in uh, Maranatha Church in Denver, we started basketball ministry to young people. Basketball is a great uh, opportunity for uh, making a good friend and, and also final goal is to share the gospel with them. Especially Mongolians, when they are outside of Mongolia, they are very strong, you know, religious. Traditionally, uh, Mongolians are Buddhist. Mongolians are very, uh, you know, nice people. They are very open, especially young people, they like to hang around with with each other. They, they like, you know, outdoor activities, going up, up to mountain. So Denver is the right place for many Mongolians to come. There are many Mongolians living in states. So that, you know, drives uh, me to uh, become a church planter in Denver. In 2014, our family moved from Mongolia to Denver. Our vision is to uh, plant many churches as we can 
you know, we need to share the gospel and reach out our community. Giving to a, a mission is so crucial to make it possible to uh, settle down in America and also reach out to the community. I'm so grateful because I've seen many people come to Christ. That's our greatest joy.